Hi and welcome to video two of five videos for section 1.4. <clears throat> In this video we're going to look at a couple examples. First example we're going to look at, we're going to be using these different laws that we uh, looked at in video one. So we want to find the limit as x approaches 5 of the following. 2x squared minus 3x plus 4. So by law 1 and 2, which was the addition and subtraction, we can rewrite this guy as what? The limit as x approaches 5 of 2x squared, and then minus the limit as x approaches 5 of 3x, and then plus the limit as x approaches 5 of 4. We can rewrite this one with this 2 into 3. That's our scalar. We can move that in front, right? So this is the same as 2 times the limit as x approaches 5 of x squared minus 3 times the limit as x approaches 5x, and then plus the limit as x approaches 5 of our constant value 4. So now by laws 7, 8, and 9, when we have the limit of some function, that's just what? This is going to be 2 times if we plug this value in. So x squared is the same as a squared. So 5 squared minus 3 times, well, the limit of x as x approaches a is just equal to that value a itself, so 5. And then here, limit of some constant, no matter what x approaches, is just equal to that constant. So what do we have here? We simplify. 5 squared, 25 times 2 is 50, minus 15, plus 4, gives us 39. So the limit of this function as x approaches 5 is equal to 39. So you're probably sitting there screaming, well, wait a minute. Why don't we just plug in 5? Because let's look at that. So if f of x is equal to that function, 2x squared minus 3x plus 4, f of 5 is what? Well, it's 2 times 5 squared minus 3, 5 plus 4, which is what we have down here at this line, right? So this is what? This is equal to 39. Same values. So now you're sitting there saying, wait a minute. You've been telling us all along we can't just plug in A because we're not worried about what that value of A actually is. We're only worried what's the limit as we approach from the left and from the right. And that is still 100% true. However, I'm going to erase this example, so if you need it, pause it real quick. Actually, you know what? Now here, I'll write it over here. We have what is called the direct substitution property. Now, I will tell you, you're probably not going to encounter this a lot, because it's this is just too straightforward, this is more algebra than it really is uh, calculus. But the direct substitution property says the following. If f is a polynomial or rational function, And, and here's the critical part, so I'm going to switch to red. So if f is a polynomial, like it was here, or a rational function, and a is in the domain of f, then The limit 
of f of x as x approaches a is just equal to f of a. And this applies to trig functions as well. Uh, so not just polynomials or rational functions, also trig functions. So let's look back here. Our, our function is what? This polynomial. Our a is 5. Is 5 within the domain of this function? Well, yeah, because a polynomial has what as its domain? All real numbers. So as long as this value a is in the domain of this function, you can just evaluate that function at that point, and that will give you the limit. So again, it's, it's very restrictive based on that information, but it is possible sometimes just to plug that value in and crunch the numbers to see what you get. So, let's look at another example. So we, have the, we want to find the following. What's the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared minus 1 over x minus 1? So let's look. Can we just do direct substitution? Well, this is a rational function. Rational meaning what? Ratio. It's one polynomial over the other. So is 1 within the domain of this function? And the answer is, unfortunately, what? No, right? Because if I plug in 1, it gives me 0 in the denominator. That means bad things. So it's not. So we can't just use direct substitution. So 1 is not in the domain. Well, what about the laws, the limit laws? Can I use those? Well, I have this function, which if I was to use law number 5, that says what? That it's the limit of the top over the limit of the bottom, but again, the denominator, the g function, cannot be 0, so I can't use that either. Now what? How am I going to figure this out? I don't want to sit there and build tables. That takes too long. So if you have a quiz or an exam, something like that. So we're going to go back to our basic algebra, factoring. Again, I know not a strong suit for some people. If it isn't, you know, get some practice. You're going to want to use it here. So let's call this guy here f of x, the whole thing. That's our function. So if I factor this, the numerator is what? It's a difference of squares, x plus 1 times x minus 1. So this guy here is equal to x plus 1, x minus 1, all over x minus 1. So now what can I do? Well, I can cancel an x minus 1 in the numerator with an x minus 1 in the denominator. So this f of x really will just simplify into what? x plus 1. So when I did that, so now let's call this guy g of x. So I simplified it, I factored, I did some canceling. So now that I've factored it, I want to find the limit as x approaches 1 of this whole thing. Well, this whole thing is really simplified to x plus 1. So the limit as x approaches 1 of x plus 1, well now 1 is in the domain here, right? It's a polynomial. I can have any value for this, so I can just simply plug in 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2. So the limit of x plus 1 as x approaches 1 is equal to 2, which means the limit of this entire piece we began with is also 2. So why could we do that, though? And can we do it all the time? Well, again, Let's think about what the idea of limits, the intuitive definition, what it's talking about. I'm not, for this function, I'm not actually concerned when x actually equals 1. I'm concerned what's the limit as I come from the left and what's the limit as I come from the right. So we could make this substitution. 
or simplification maybe if you want to talk about. We can make this simplification because f of x is equal to g of x except when x equals 1. So if I pick 0 and plug that in here, what do I get? 0 minus 1, 0 minus 1, negative 1 over negative 1 is positive 1. If I plug in 0 here, 0 plus 1 is 1. That will work for no matter what value you pick except for when x equals 1. But again, the idea of limits is I don't care when it's specifically 1. I'm, I'm concerned about the values as I get closer and closer to 1. So because these two functions are equal, except when it's actually equal to that value, I can make that substitution. And so we have the following. If f of x is equal to some other function, g of x, when x is not equal to a, then the limit as x approaches a of f of x is the same as the limit as x approaches a of g of x provided the limits exist. So again, if it's going up to infinity or something, then of course the limits don't exist to begin with, so they're not really equal to each other. But if it goes to some specific value, <clears throat> then we can say that those two limits are equal because, again, we're not specifically concerned with just that one point. So the short of it is if we can simplify some function to where we can then use the direct substitution property, by all means, attack that root. All right, so that's the end of video two. Come on back and we'll look at video three.